Hello to everyone. I welcome everyone who is going to listen to my lecture today. So uh, today we plan to discuss the uh, very specific aspect of national accounting system I and mean, then the uh, important issues concerning the gross domestic product, especially um, we need to clarify the difference between the nominal gross domestic product and real gross domestic product or simply saying the difference between nominal GDP and uh, real GDP. Before turning to this question, I would like to remind you just a uh, brief review of key points discussed before. So uh, what is GDP actually? So gross domestic product uh, reflects the total market value of all goods, final goods and services produced within the specific period of time um, by different enterprises, companies, firms, uh, located within the borders of the single country. So um, perhaps you know this because we discussed this in the previous lecture, but I would like to remind again because we uh, will probably use this term. So um, the other important issue concerned is the different methods of counting GDP. Uh, the scientists and accountants and statisticians offer three major methods for counting GDP, uh, namely they are the um, expenditures approach, income approach, and um, the GDP counted in terms of value added. Well, uh, all these three methods uh, actually offers very simple and clear way for counting the national product generated normally within one year. Expenditures approach offers specific formula for counting and uh, this formula uh, consists of several major elements that are uh, C, consumption expenditures, then IG, investments, so normally that is the gross private domestic investments, then G, government purchases or government expenditures, and finally net export, that in turn uh, shows the difference between the export of the country and the import of the country. Well, uh, in terms of income approach, we need to find the total of different types of the incomes generated within the frames of national economy. So normally, uh, these types of incomes uh, imply uh, different, basically um, the salaries, wages and salaries of the first people generated within the air, accumulated within the air. Then the rent payments, different rent payments, including the land rent, etc. And uh, incomes of Proprietors, different types of proprietors, the corporations' profits, undistributed profits of corporations, indirect taxes, etc. Well, uh, the question is: uh, Is it reasonable? Is it logically justified to count the gross domestic product in terms of expenditures at the same time in terms of incomes of the companies and firms? Um, there's no any problem because um, the logic is very simple. Uh, if the company generates the income, it means that at the same time, uh, perhaps for the other company, the income of this company will be the expenditures and vice versa. So if the company spends a specific amount for producing the different goods, and different services, at the same time, the expenditures of this company immediately turn to the incomes of the other companies. Well, and the third method is counting of gross domestic product in terms of value added. Well, um, before uh, explaining this method, we need to understand what we mean when we say the value added. The value added normally 
implies the differences in costs of the firm associated with the production of goods at different stages of production. Say, if you want to produce the specific item, some good, uh, probably you need to spend specific amount of money for uh, buying the resources. And then at the first stage of production, you may use these resources, spend specific amount of money for electricity, for uh, labor, for raw materials, etc. But when you go to the next stage of production, you may need the other resources. And that's why the price of the product or the same item, the item of the first stage of production is slightly different from the price of the same item on the second stage of production. And the difference between them is known in economics like value added. Well, so uh, very shortly, we revised with you the major methods of counting GDP. And uh, the other important question that you need to emphasize is that there is very um, important aspect that we need to understand when we count gross domestic product. And this problem is the problem of double counting. Uh, when we define the GDP, we explain it like the total market value of all final goods and services. So uh, the key question is, key term is final good and service. What do we mean when we say final good or service? Final good is product that uh, normally is produced for final use, for consumption, immediate consumption. A simple example is automobile. Uh, if you want to buy the car, you may go to uh, automobile salon and order some, choose some car, order them and then buy. Then you can immediately use this, drive a car and enjoy your car. In that case, car, automobile, is evaluated as final good. In contrast, in, with final goods, we have the intermediate goods as well. So what are the intermediate good? Intermediate good is product item that is designed for uh, further producing process or resale or further processing. The example is automobile tires. So, uh, it's clear that it's impossible to drive a car if you don't have a tires. Well, that's why if automobile is final product, final good, the tires, automobile tires, are intermediate goods. What's the difference between them in terms of gross domestic product? The principal aspect concerning the differences is um, that, unfortunately, we cannot count the prices of intermediate goods when we want to calculate very precise and accurate gross domestic product. We need to count only the prices of final goods. And the reason is very easy, very simple. Easy to understand, very simple. Because the prices of intermediate goods already have been included in the price of final good. That's why if you want to count the prices of tires as well as you count the price of automobile at the same time, it will be the very great statistical bias. Why? Because uh, normally by doing so, we'll count the same item twice. And uh, by doing so, we'll form the double counting problem for GDP counting process. And that's wrong. So we have to be very accurate. We have to be very responsible for all calculation process. So what we need to uh, memorize, we cannot count intermediate goods during the calculating process of gross domestic product. Except the final goods, there are several items, several operations, economic and basically financial operations that we cannot count for um, gross domestic product. So what we have to exclude from the accounting process of GDP? Firstly, of course, uh, as I mentioned before, we need to exclude the 
operations with intermediate goods. We have to exclude all operations uh, associated with resale or se buying, selling the secondhand goods. Then we have to exclude the specific operations associated with paper transactions. Normally, they are the financial transactions. Uh, an example is the selling and buying of shares, the um, obligations of bonds. So, because when you buy or sell the shares, it means that um, formally, the specific amount of money just uh, inflows outflows from the one pocket and inflows into another pocket. We don't observe any production process during this uh, paper transaction. That's why, because the GDP by definition counts only produced goods. So for GDP, it's very important to count the production, direct production process, to observe direct production. And uh, when we sell and buy shares, bonds, and different similar financial assets, it means that we normally realize the paper transactions. So the money moves uh, from one pocket to another pocket. And that's why, because of this very strong argument, we cannot include this paper transactions, the operations with financial assets, into the accounting of GDP. The other aspect is associated with uh, transfer payments. Look, uh, what we say, uh, what we understand when we say transfer payments? Transfer payments are specific payments realized by the government as the financial support and aid to the. Mm -hmm. Hello again. So uh, let's continue. We try to understand the operations that we have, unfortunately, exclude from the GDP. And the next item discussed was uh, transfer payments. So uh, when we say transfer payments, uh, normally we imply the uh, different forms of financial uh, aid provided by the government to the citizens of the country, to the residents of the country, in form of social support. When we say the transfer payments, the broad examples of this are the uh, different uh, uh, payments re for retired people, the different payments realized by the government for the handicapped people, for disabled people. Uh, we can uh, also include in the list of the transfer payments the uh, monetary payments from the government to the veterans uh, of the wars and uh, social security payments. So that's all kind of this uh, similar financial payments realized by the government voluntarily uh, to the citizens are uh, considered like transfer payments. So uh, because uh, during the realization of this process, we again don't observe any direct production, any manufacturing. That's why we cannot uh, include these operations, I mean the transfer payments, into the calculating process of GDP. So, uh, except for that, there are um, several different types of business activity, like the, um, say, black market operations and the shadow economy, uh, when the uh, people earn money uh, in form of different illegal business forms and because of that uh, officially the incomes generated as a result of this business activity cannot be counted in GDP as well. Then uh, we cannot register for GDP the uh, business activity of uh, private business activity of people um, who don't register their business legally. Say, the uh, very simple example uh, you can use. Imagine you need to, to the aid of cleaner at home and uh, uh, we have to be truthful that not always we apply to the, um, to the services of the specific firms. 
There are two reasons, because uh, it takes time, and the second one is sometimes not so cheaper. But uh, you may um, talk to your neighbor or to your, uh, just to your, to people that you know, and uh, you know that they need uh, uh, some money, for example, and offer them to uh, work as a cleaner in your apartment and directly pay for their service. So in this case, because they actually we see the source, we observe the source, we uh, we see um, the business activity. Uh, as a result, we can observe the value added created as minimum. But unfortunately, the sub uh, as the business activity, this um, uh, actually didn't reduce that in any uh, uh, in any official documents like a business activity so uh, we cannot uh, register this and uh, that's why we cannot count this in GDP okay so um, uh, for the students who uh, started to listen to me a little bit uh, later I would like uh, to repeat again that we just revised the several questions that we discussed in our previous previous lectures. But today, uh, the main question is nominal and real GDP and the differences between them. You know, that um, actually when we want to analyze the macroeconomic activity of the different countries, and uh, that's more important, we want to compare their macroeconomic results. So we need some statistical and economic information. Basically, uh, the statisticians, analysts, and the economists, they use the, macro, as, uh, the key macroeconomic indicators that are GDP, GNP, then national income, net domestic product, um, personal income, disposable income, and all elements that uh, we consider um, within the frames of national accounting system. But um, the question is that when we want to compare the macroeconomic activity and uh, of the different countries, and we when we want to um, do this in figures and precise numbers, there is one um, great obstacle on that way. And what is the meaning of this obstacle? What is the problem? The problem is that. You know, the GDP normally is counted for one year. And if you want to compare, say, the GDP of Azerbaijan for 2019, and basically, by the way, that's about 80, was about 82 billion uh, of manat. And uh, you want to compare with respective data, I mean, the GDP for 2020, also counted for current year. The problem is that uh, the, uh, the data may be different. Say, for the every next year, the GDP can be greater than GDP of the previous year. But the problem is that how truthful the increase is. Does this increase in uh, numbers reflect the real situation with production of the goods and services? Because um, you know that the prices are not stable. From year to year, the prices of the different goods and services may change. That's why if you observe some increase in every next year uh, GDP, the very important question may arise. Does this increase reflect the amount of production? Or more precisely, increase in amount of production of goods and services? Or that's the formal nominal increase. And this nominal increase is only monetary expression of the formal difference. I want to clarify the situation. Look. Um, for example, if GDP of some country 
for 2019 formally is 150 billion dollars and the gdp of the same country for 2020 for is 200 billion dollars so obviously we observe the increase uh, I mean, the increase is the, the amount of this increase is about $50 billion. But look, if you know that for 2020, the prices sharply increased, does it mean that uh, comparable with the 2019 GDP, the result of this increase was increase in real production? Or that's just increase because of the increased prices of the goods and the services and uh, no any increase in the amount of goods and services we can observe so to uh, explain the situation we use nominal and uh, real gdp please the uh, students switch off switch all the voice because i can i can hear everything <laughs> well so normal gdp normally is the gdp counted in the current prices so if i count the nominal gdp for 2020 it means that i have to use the prices of 2020 well so if i want to compare with the gdp of the other years i can't do this or as minima if i really could do that the result will be wrong why because the price level of previous years may be absolutely different that's why we need to deflate the nominal gdp and convert the nominal gdp into real gdp how to do that? We have very strong and precise formula for converting nominal gross domestic product into real gross domestic product. Formally, real GDP equals fraction line. In the uh, numerator, you have to write nominal GDP. In denominator, you have to write price index. Well, so now you see the new term price index well for different countries um, we may use a different price indexes but um, among these price indexes there is one the most popular price index known like consumer price index well except for consumer price index uh, we can use the gdp deflator as well by the way, how to calculate GDP deflator? To calculate GDP deflator, we need just to divide the nominal GDP of the year by real GDP of the same year. Or simply saying, GDP deflator equals fraction line. In numerator, you have to write nominal GDP of the year. In denominator, you have to write real GDP of the same year. Now, the new question arises, how to calculate price index as minima? What does it mean? Does it make any sense to calculate consumer price index? The answer is yes. It makes sense to calculate consumer price index. But the new question is how to calculate this? Well, to understand this, we need to go back to definition of consumer price index. What does it mean, the consumer price index or just uh, price index? Price index equals to the ratio of two values. The first is the value of market basket in current year. And the second one is the value of the same market basket in base year. So, as you can see, price index reflects the ratio between the market basket counted in terms of current prices for the current year 
to the same market basket but count it in the prices of base year. So uh, the way to count price index is very simple. Look, uh, what are you, you actually have to put me question, what is the market basket? So uh, market basket is the amount that we can calculate, by the way, the market basket has the monetary expression, that is a specific monetary expressed amount that we count by multiplying the quantities of several different products and services included in market basket by respective prices of these goods and services. Simply saying, market basket is the um, list of the goods and services that uh, average urban customer use for his or her needs. Well, in uh, different contexts, the number of items included in the market basket fluctuates. So it's different. Um, different countries can include different number of items in this um, list of the goods. But uh, the number of goods and uh, uh, services changes from um, 50, 100 till 300 and 400 different items. Well, imagine that our market basket consists of three goods. So good A, good B, and good C. And uh, the average urban customer prefers for good A, three units of product, for good B, two units of product, and for good C, one unit. Every product, I mean ABC, has specific price. So if the price of product A is one manat, you need to multiply three units by one manat. If uh, the price of the second product B is two manat, you need to multiply two units, I mean the quantity, by by the respective price of this good. So by doing so, at the end, you need to count the total of this quantity amount and identify the minimum amount of money that the average urban customer needs to realize his wants and needs, I mean, to buy the food, to pay for uh, communal services, to pay for electricity, I don't know, for heating, use uh, some services and hand dressing or something like that. Well, the uh, value of market basket is very important for calculating the price index. Well, so now I see that we have um, several minutes. And uh, by the way, uh, if you have some questions, you may immediately write me on the chat. I can see the questions. And uh, if you want to, if you want to uh, put my question, please immediately do that. Because um, as uh, I actually informed before my students, so every day uh, we have classes. Uh, and microeconomics and economics too. That's why I just decided to uh, divide the, uh, to split the students, I mean the Azerbaijani speaking, Russian speaking and English speaking students, in order they can hear the lecture in all three languages. I'll try to move uh, with the same velocity in order all students can understand me and can enjoy the lecture materials. Well, uh, so, uh, the lesson actually uh, slightly ends. Um, the only request to all my students will be please try to enter on time. Because uh, I started at one o'clock, but unfortunately till um, only uh, to the end of the lecture, I see the several students, eight students who listen to me. Well, 
I see uh, Fugar, Kunel, Solmas, Chichak, Leila, Nazila. Please invite Raula, Nurai, then Leila, Dilara, Kunai, Nazreen. So I welcome everyone. Uh, to, uh, did you understand anything from my lecture? Uh, uh, if yes, please um, put my question. I can explain. So, the uh, something about the textbook that you can use. The textbook is uh, McConnell Stanley Brew Economics. Then, except for that, very useful and easy for reading and understanding. The textbook, uh, Carl Case and Ray Fair, by the way. I recommend to use the both versions of this textbook, the English version and at the same time the Azerbaijani version of this textbook, in order you can compare and uh, understand better the questions that you cannot understand during the lecture. Well, so um, the nominal and real uh, GDP is uh, very popular uh, methods for comparing the macroeconomic uh, indicators of the different countries. Well, I would like to show the example for counting the price index. Well, as uh, I explained before, the price index is a ratio between the values of the same market basket but counted in different terms. First, the, in terms of current year, and the second in terms of base year. So what's the difference between the current year and base year? Imagine that I want to compare the GDP uh, of the country for 2020, and uh, uh, I want to evaluate the progress, uh, if actually, if any, uh, with the GDP for 2018, for example. So in that case, the current year market basket will be counted in prices of 2020, but base year will be 2018 because um, two years passed and uh, obviously we need to observe, do we have any progress or not? Does the country um, make any progress in economic growth or uh, uh, vice versa, uh, we, we don't see any movement in positive direction I mean the economic situation with the country well um, if you have the uh, pens and pencils in your hands and the paper I can um, say you the some uh, figures in order you can count together with me and then compare the results to understand better uh, the deflating process of nominal GDP well, so one of the order, one of the order of operations that you have to do to realize when you convert uh, nominal GDP into real GDP. First step, you need to calculate the value of market baskets consisting of specific number of items in terms of current year, say year 2020. Second step you need to calculate the value of the same market basket in terms of 2018. And that is base year, the year that we need to compare with. The third step, you need to find the ratio between the first data and the second data. So you need to divide the value that you counted at the first step to the value that you counted at the second step. Then, this, the result of this operation, I mean the result of this division, will be your price index. Now you have the price index. To simplify the uh, value, the calculation process, and uh, uh, I think mostly because of uh, leaving the decimal places, the result of this ratio, you need to multiply by 100. At the end, you will get the index. This index will be the price index. For example, 105. 105 means that the result of division probably was 1.05, and then you multiplied it by 100, 
and found that the uh, find the result 105. So our price index is 105. Now, the fourth step, what we have to do, how we can use the price index. To use price index, we, you have, or and we have, to have a look on the value of your nominal GDP for 2020. One of the, the nominal, for example, the nominal GDP of the country for 2020 is 150 billion of dollars. How to find, how to convert this nominal GDP into real GDP? Very easy. And that will be the, your fourth step. You need to divide the nominal GDP of 2020, say 150 billion of dollars, by the value of your price index. And the value of your price index was 105, as I mentioned before. The result will be deflating, or in other words, real value of your GDP in terms of the prices of 2018. So you deflated nominal GDP of 2020 to the price level of 2018. And then now you can compare them. You can compare because normally they are comparable values. And by doing so, by completing the deflating process, we will try to avoid the possible bias and possible mistakes of calculation. That's all for today. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please immediately put me questions if you have right now, because I can hear you very easily and very clearly. So let me apply to everyone. Nurai, do you have any questions? Tolmas, any questions? Chichek, Gunai, Sona, Raula, do you have any questions? Please put me. If you don't have any questions, please don't forget to have a look on my Edmoda. Uh, uh, sign actually, please write to my Edmoda account. Well, because uh, I can see all your questions. Uh, by the way, if you know this, please immediately um, participate on my chat in order I can uh, better control the situation and maybe help you with some misunderstanding possible. Well, thank you so much. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.